One of the most famous trials in America happened here, in the small town of Dayton, Tennessee, in 1925. According to the legend, schoolteacher John Scopes was on trial because he'd broken a state law and taught the theory of evolution to his high school class. In the trial that followed, Scopes was vindicated and the Bible thumpers were made to look stupid. The prosecution was led by William Jennings Bryan. According to the legend, Bryan was an ignorant, Bible-thumping fundamentalist. But who was he really? William Jennings Bryan was um, the architect of the anti-evolution law. Uh, he, at this time, was 68 years old, I believe. Um, he was been long on the American stage. He was the youngest person ever nominated for president of the United States by a major political party. He was a progressive, sort of populist, democratic politician. He'd been a congressman from, from Nebraska who had gotten on the side of sort of the Western uh, farmers and, and mine interest, uh, criticizing the, the big bankers and the business establishment in the East that they thought were oppressing the common folk of middle America. And he rode that during a time of economic uh, recession, severe economic recession that happened in the 1890s. And he used that to get himself nominated for president. Um, some people viewed him as the most leftist person who had ever been nominated for president of the United States. He just misses that election to the Republican candidate, uh, William McKinley, then was nominated twice more by the Democrats and helped eventually help Woodrow Wilson be elected president and in return become Secretary of State um, into the Wilson administration where he, where he fights for, for peace, for America not entering World War I, becomes a champion of anti-militarism and the arbitration of international disputes. His views were very much based on, on his religious beliefs. He believed in the equality of, of working people um, that they deserved rights and, should, and they should stand up against the power forces of the moneyed elite. And, but he believed on those things on religious grounds. He equated Darwinism with social Darwinism. So he thought that survival of the fittest thinking as applied to humans, not as applied to the rest of creation, he didn't, he didn't uh, weigh in on that issue, but as applied to humans, um, led people well, to put it in his way, he said, if you tell people they descended from apes, they'll act like them. And um, he did not think that they acted in a way he would want to support. So he, he, he was worried about the social implications of Darwinism. He also thought that it led, because of its conflict, w w what he perceived as a conflict with the Genesis account of creation, again, particularly the separate creation of Adam and Eve in, in, in God's image, um, that this would lead to reduced faith. And so to defend the, the Christian faith and defend social morality, he was arguing against evolution. He did not, as applied to humans, he didn't think that part. He didn't, they said he wouldn't quarrel about the evolution of other animals, or I don't think he even cared about the evolution of the human body. It was mostly the human moral attributes and, and mind that he was most concerned about. Now, to be clear, he, he did not believe that religious creationism should be taught as science. That that shouldn't be part of the science curriculum because he didn't, there was no scientific support at that time. There wasn't an alternative religious theory. He just simply thought that the public high schools should be neutral on this subject by basically not talking about origins, about skipping at least human origins, skipping over that topic. William Jennings Bryan, who led the prosecution in the Scopes trial, wasn't a fool or a villain. He'd been nominated three times as the Democrats' candidate for President of the United States. He'd served as Secretary of State. He wasn't an ignorant, Bible-thumping fundamentalist. He was an educated man, a social liberal, a leading lawyer, and a well-known public speaker. Next time, we'll look at the man who led Scopes' defence, Clarence Darrow.